Honorable Ambassadors, Mr. Bill Kaur, Deputy Secretary of the United States Department of Health and Human Services, distinguished speakers, executive management team, colleagues, the media, good morning, welcome, and thank you for joining us today for World Health Day. I wish to especially welcome everyone who is participating remotely today from countries around the Americas. World Health Day is a special once a year event for us, a kind of birthday of WHO, a celebration that marks the founding of the World Health Organization in 1948. But it is also a serious occasion. Over the years, it has been the opportunity for us to focus on an issue that is a priority concern for global public health. Few would dispute the importance of this year's campaign, which focuses on the number one risk factor for illness and death in countries around the world. In the countries of the Americas, it affects between 30 and 48% of the population. It strikes developed and developing countries alike without discriminating between rich and poor. We sometimes call it the silent killer. In its early stages, it often has no symptoms and as a result, often goes undiagnosed. Yet, it is the leading risk factor for heart attack and strokes and can also cause kidney failure, blindness, and other health problems. In combination with other risk factors such as tobacco, harmful use of alcohol, obesity, diabetes, and high cholesterol, it becomes even more dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, this silent, indiscriminate killer is hypertension. In the Americas, at least one in three people, and in some countries, nearly one in two, has hypertension, meaning blood pressure that is 140 over 90 or higher. What are some of the reasons for this high prevalence? They include aging of the population, unhealthy diets, physical inactivity, and obesity, all of which, like hypertension and tobacco, are risk factors for cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of preventable and premature deaths and illness in the Americas around the world. But not all the risk factors for hypertension are behavioral. The risk of high blood pressure increases with age due to the hardening of blood vessels. But blood vessel aging can be slowed through healthy living, including healthy eating and reduced salt intake. So we know that behavior change is important however difficult it may be to bring it about. And many of us know this difficulty. Many of us know the struggle with the weight gain. You will lose 10 pounds, and then in six months we are back with the 10 pounds are going up to 12. So it is, it is a constant struggle. People's conditions, however, are heavily influenced by the conditions in which they live, work, play, and eat. Multi-sectoral approaches to address the underlying conditions have proven very effective in the prevention and control of hypertension. In this regard, public sector policies and regulations are fundamental to the prevention of chronic non-communicable diseases and their risk factors as hypertension. Low-income people are more exposed to risk factors. And at the same time, they have fewer resources to cope with health problems. For example, they 
do not have the resources very often to access health services or to access and to, and to reach the benefits of social programs. They are also less able to protect their families from the disruptions that result from disability, loss of income, or out-of-pocket health costs. These are important considerations. In low- and middle-income countries, many people do not seek treatment for hypertension because it is prohibitively expensive. Families can then end up spending a substantial share of their income on hospitalizations and care which is needed for complications such as heart attacks, stroke, or kidney failure. Indeed, millions of people fall into poverty every year due to catastrophic health spending or loss of family income due to death or disability all as a result of hypertension and its complications. In all these ways, a condition that does not discriminate against rich or poor can and does have a greater impact on vulnerable people. And it has a negative impact as well on communities, societies, and entire economies as well. But the good news is that hypertension is both preventable and treatable. So what can we say to help people reduce their chances of developing high blood pressure? We can urge them to reduce their salt intake, to eat a healthy and balanced diet, to avoid the harmful use of alcohol, to engage in regular physical activity, and maintain a healthy body weight. For individuals, it is also vitally important to get the blood pressure checked regularly. And that's why we chose the slogan, Know Your Numbers. And this slogan was chosen for PAHO's World Health Day campaign. So I'm going to challenge all of you, certainly in PAHO, today and throughout next week, challenge each other. Do you know your number? Let's, let's, let's challenge each other. We may actually be saving the life of our colleagues. So do you know your numbers? This is a personal responsibility, but it is also a professional responsibility for doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers. But in tackling hypertension, it is just as important to take action at the population level. In the Americas, some of our member countries are doing just that. Countries like Colombia have promoted physical activity through urban planning and transportation, and through the immensely popular Ciclovias or Sunday bike walks, bikeways. Sorry. Bolivia and Ecuador both have strong healthy living initiatives that include active living and healthy eating. Like Peru, they are promoting their country's traditional cuisines as much healthier than the modern, over, than the modern over-processed foods that are increasingly replacing traditional foods in people's diets. Argentina has worked with its food industry to reduce the salt content in breads and industrially processed foods, and now other countries are following in its footsteps. Mexico is pioneering efforts to remove junk food and sugar-sweetened beverages from schools and to promote healthy foods to reduce overweight and obesity in school children. Here in the United States, states such as New York, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee have similar initiatives that are showing real benefits. But in addition to these important prevention initiatives, it's also important to make sure that healthcare providers ensure early detection and treatment of hypertension. For hypertension, the most important goal is control. People who are diagnosed with hypertension can be treated and controlled over the long term, which significantly boosts their chances of having a long, healthy, and productive life. 
and I make sure I'm not saying unproductive, and productive life. <laughs> we do not have as much data from our region as we would like. But recent studies in Latin America show that control rates are generally low, ranging from some 12 to 41 percent. By comparison, Canada, Cuba, and the United States have control rates of more than 50 percent. But efforts in our region are starting to show returns. Costa Rica and El Salvador have improved the quality of primary health care services, including the care for hypertension and other non-communicable diseases. Chile has expanded its guaranteed coverage for these conditions, and Brazil is providing free medicines for hypertension and diabetes through its popular pharmacy program. A great number of countries are taking advantage of PAHO's own strategic fund, which pools purchases of drugs to create economies of scale that make essential medicines more affordable. We take this opportunity to invite all of our countries to use the fund to purchase drugs for treatment of hypertension and other chronic conditions. In May, the World Health Assembly will consider a global NCD action plan for 2013 to 2020. This plan will provide a roadmap for WHO member states to address the non-communicable diseases and their risk factors, including hypertension, as well as a global monitoring framework that proposes a global reduction in high blood pressure of 25% by the year 2025. To support action towards this and other NCD goals, WHO has developed a cost-effective and affordable total cardiovascular risk approach that can be implemented in primary health care even in lower income countries. We're also recommending evidence-based strategies to address behavioral risk factors such as tobacco use, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and the harmful use of alcohol. World Health Day gives us an opportunity to raise awareness of hypertension, but also, and this is just as important, an opportunity to move forward on non-communicable diseases, which are one of the greatest challenges for us in the 21st century. Our member countries in the Caribbean, you thought I was going to forget the Caribbean. No, the Caribbean has been at the forefront of the fight on NCDs, and they have ensured that NCDs receive the attention that they deserve, and I wish to place on record our thanks for the inspiration of the Caribbean and their ability to get this matter addressed at the UN high-level meeting in 2011. All of us, public health advocate, public health advocates, sorry, health workers, the academic community, civil society, the private sector, families and individuals, each and all of us have a role to play in supporting this agenda. At the Pan American Health Organization, we will work to keep up the momentum of World Health Day throughout the 2013 calendar year and beyond, coordinating with other campaigns, including Wellness Week and World Days that are focused on other non-communicable diseases and risk factors, including tobacco, heart disease, kidney, and kidney health, um, health and diabetes. I look forward to your support for all of these efforts as the year goes forward. And I thank you again for being with us here today. I want to invite you warmly, all of you, PAHO and our other colleagues, to invite us to the walk on the walk tomorrow as we showcase hypertension and raise awareness. So tomorrow morning at 9.30, we will leave from here and you are warmly we um, welcome to be part of that action. Know your numbers. Conoces su numero. Thank you very much.